And I just want to get right into it because there was a lot of reporting on this that got, had me confused. I was just like, wait a minute, is there brand new DNA on this case? And what what's the source of the DNA? I'm going to put a little slide up on the screen. And DNA is contained in blood, semen, skin cells, tissue, organs, muscle, brain cells, bone, teeth, hair, saliva, mucus, perspiration, fingernails, urine, feces, etc. Where can DNA evidence be found at a crime scene? D DNA evidence can be collected from virtually anywhere. So for our purposes, why did I uh, why did I put that slide up there? Because what evidentiary DNA was left on these victims? And let's not forget, the bodies were there for over 10 years. So they were left out in the elements. So it would come to reason that the only type of thing that would survive being in those elements and provided it was probably protected and covered some way was hairs. Yeah, Billy, it's, a, it's very fortunate for the investigators that um, the bodies were wrapped in burlap because if they had been maybe just buried under, you know, a couple of inches of dirt or, you know, that sort of thing, they probably would have all degenerated. But the idea, the, the fact that they were in burlap and it was, they might've been taped and they were maybe, maybe they were just a little bit under the surface of the sand, just enough uh, preservation that um, it really helped crack the case because without that DNA evidence, you've got cell phone evidence and, you know, cell tower evidence, things like that. Um, and you have the avalanche and you have some other things, but that is really fabulous. And perhaps in a way, if Rex Sherman is guilty, he actually is uh, responsible for his own conviction by wrapping the bodies up the way he did. You know, right from the, uh, of course, that's the Gilgo 4 on the screen. We never want to forget the victims of, of this case. Maureen Brainerd Bonds, who Rex Hewerman has yet to be charged with, but uh, according to the Suffolk County DA's office, they keep saying that the charges are imminent on that case. And of course, Megan Waterman, Melissa Bartolome, and Amber Lynn Costello. Uh, Mike, some of the most important, one of the most important documents on this case, and I can't believe that many people don't go to this document when really this is the Holy Grail. This is the Bible of this case. And I'm referring to page 25 of the bail application. Right. Now, DNA analysis of hairs recovered from the examination of the victim's bodies. During the course of this investigation, each of the four victims' bodies were examined by a forensic scientist with the Suffolk County Crime Laboratory, which revealed as follows. Miss Brainerd Bonds had been left restrained by three leather belts, one of which was utilized to tie Bonds' feet, ankle, legs together. During the examination of the belts, a female human hair was recovered from the buckle of one of the belts by the Suffolk County Crime Lab, hereafter referred to as female hair on Bonds. On or about December 18, 2010, the Suffolk County Laboratory uh, said this hair was able to determine that it corresponded to a Caucasian head hair fragment. Although this hair was not suitable for nuclear DNA profiling at that time, it was subsequently submitted for further DNA analysis. Megan Waterman had been bound by clear or white duct tape. During the course of the examination of Miss Waterman's body, two female human hairs were recovered, one from outside the head area and the other from the tape of the head area. Both hairs were recovered in the vicinity of Miss Waterman's head. Uh, hereafter, two female hairs on Waterman. Examination by the Suffolk County Laboratory indicated that the two females' hairs on Waterman exhibited Caucasian European characteristics but were unsuitable for further DNA testing at the time. The two female hairs on Waterman were subsequently submitted for further DNA analysis. So um, we're cutting to the chase. These hairs is going to be determined they, in fact, do belong to Asa Elorup. Now, that raises a lot of questions, and we're going to get more into that later, but I want to get to the other uh, Amber Costello. An examination of the body of Amber Costello revealed that she appeared to have been bound by three pieces of clear or white duct tape. During the course of the examination of Ms. Costello's body, a female human hair was recovered specifically on a piece of tape inside of the burlap wrapping in the vicinity of Miss Costello's head, here and after female hair on Costello. A subsequent examination of female hair on Costello led to the determination that it had Caucasian European characteristics. However, 
It was unsuitable for further DNA testing at that time at the Suffolk County Crime Laboratory. Now, because we have we have to realize right now, Mike, right. this is 2010. Mm-hmm. They did not have the technology back then that they have now to identify these hairs. And they used a process called mitochondrial DNA analysis. From what I understand now, and certainly I am no scientist, but they have gotten much better at identifying from a much less amount of DNA and identifying where the DNA came from. Your thoughts, Mike? Billy, first I just want to uh, welcome Heather Whatever, a new member, and to say welcome to the show. Um, you know, leaps and bounds. I mean, I remember when DNA was first used in a criminal case in New York, and you remember that, and you actually needed you know, a a pretty good amount of blood. Uh, They couldn't, they had no idea that you could get it from hair and all these other things. It was just amazing what they could do. And then we had the uh, Twin Towers being attacked and the the DNA technology leaped uh, a generation just that. And then now from 2010 to today, it's leaped several generations and uh, it's gotten better and better and better and better. Uh, touch DNA, which you saw in the Koberger case, provided the, uh, provided the pivotal piece of evidence they needed to uh, narrow the search down to, um, you know, Brian Koberger. It's fabulous what it's done. And the second, as you as as you would maybe want to read in continuously in the next page, uh, everything was resubmitted again with new technology, and it narrows everything down to Asa Alsrup. Very interesting. 